talk La Liga. What an exciting week of La Liga. I know Barca fans aren't going to admit that, but this is what we want, bro. We want a real good competitive La Liga, and that's exactly what's happening. If you don't know what I'm saying, Barcelona drops their first points of the season after picking up seven wins in seven games. On the eighth game, they finally lose, right? Real Madrid winning against Atletico Madrid the whole game, dude. Literally the whole game cooking. And not the whole game, but they score in the second half. What was the second half they scored? Yeah, second half they scored at the Militao. And then last minute of the game, last two minutes of the game, uh, Correa ties the game up. Unbelievable. I have so much I want to say. Um, it's now officially 19, 18, 20, uh, three-point gap, I think. 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, wait, that's that right? 19, 19, 20, 21. What did I say? What did I say? 18, 19. What was I saying, bro? Uh, 21. Uh, so it's a three-point gap between Real Madrid and um, and uh, and and Barcelona. And now Atletico Madrid held themselves. See, because it was going to be bad for Atleti, bro. If Atleti would have lost to Real Madrid, Real Madrid would have been on, I think, 20 points. Barcelona would have been on 21 points. And Atletico Madrid would have been on 15 points. But with the tie today against Real Madrid, they kept it two points from Madrid, and they're still alive for the league. So it was a big, big result. Let's start off with the Barcelona game because that game happened first. Uh, shocker. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had the game on my phone. I was actually at a store, and I had the game on my phone, and I, I forgot they were playing in the beginning. And um, and then when I turned the game on, the second goal happens, and it's 2-0 very, very uh early in this game wasn't it? it was it was like 28 minutes in and I believe it's the second goal I don't know what goal it was but I just remember looking at my phone and I've never like seen you don't see this often in real life like when you're playing FC when you're playing FIFA it's normal but homie got the goalkeeper one-on-one -on -one, yeah and he does like a ball roll fake shot he shot canceled in real life bro you don't see this and he cooked defender scores the goal and uh, Barcelona end up losing to uh, Osasuna. Um, and uh, a game where, if I'm being honest with you, Barcelona held all the possession. Um, but when you look at the stats, shots on target, six for Barca, five for Osasuna, 11 shots altogether for Osasuna, 12, 12 for Barcelona. So outside of the, uh, the possession, which was 75 to 25, the game was a, you would say, even game except for the possession. But the fact that they went forward and put up four goals on five shots in target, it was just their day, man. It was just their day. And that's going to happen. That's going to happen when you're trying to win a league. That's going to happen to Barca. It's going to happen to Madrid. Um, so nothing nothing really to, to, to panic if you're Barcelona, I think. I think you're fine, man. Um, and I think today the Atleti Madrid versus Atletico versus Madrid tie is the best result for Barca fans. Had they won their game, oof, they'd have been cooking. Um, with that being said, let's talk about Madrid. I want to start off by saying this. There's something special about Lamine Yamal. And the reason I say that is because I know y'all going to be like, here he goes glazing again. No, but listen, see, Lamine Yamal at such a young age is doing something that many players can't do. He's having the composure, the the smarts, and the patience, which you usually don't see in young players. What do I mean by that? Real Madrid is winning 1-0 against Atletico Madrid. It's close to the 90th minute, maybe even already over the 90th minute. I don't remember exactly. They have a breakaway. Endrick has a one-on-one, -on -one, one defender in front of him. The goalie, obviously, down there. He's breaking. He passes the midfield line, still a one-on-one. -on -one. Jude Bellingham is on Endrick's shoulder. If, Jude, if Endrick just waits, Jude Bellingham is going to give him an overlap, and he can either sprint into space or he can lay it off to Jude Bellingham. Instead, he takes a shot from 30 yards out, right? And it's a shot that, yes, it gets close to net, and yes, if it's on goal, maybe you score. But here's the thing that really blows my mind about this. Here's the thing that really, really shocks me about this is that you're taking this shot Okay, and this is the problem with Endrick. You're taking this shot against Oblak, right? Alisson, Ederson, Courtois, Ter Stegen, Oblak, Neuer. They top 10, bro. You not taking this shot from there on a top 10 goalkeeper, Endrick. What are you doing? This is something Ancelotti gets in the locker room and goes, yo, I'm giving you playing time because I, I want you to be a part of this. But you can't do stuff like that at Real Madrid, bro. That's not going to fly here at Real Madrid. You got to, you, I know you're a baby, but you got to be smarter than that. That This is a massive opportunity 
to knock off one of our rivals in their house. Their fans are already mad. The game gets delayed because the fans are raging. And you do this against O Block. You think you're going to be O Block on a shot on the floor from 30 yards out? Have you lo- O Block? Are you kidding me? Like, you. You got to get in the locker room. Oh, Ancelotti got to get in that locker room and just and f- give it to Enric. And not just Ancelotti. Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham needs to get in that locker room and be like, yo, dude, listen, man. Like, I get you're young and I get, but like, this is, you know, we, we play for trophies around here, bro. Barcelona slipped up. We had to win this game. You can't be shooting from that far out. And I know people are like, Scales, he's just a kid. Yeah, but that's why a lot of times you don't see just a kid playing at Real Madrid at Barcelona. That's why a lot of times just a kid goes out on loan at Real Madrid and Barcelona. Ancelotti believed in you. Ancelotti trusted you. Ancelotti gave you an opportunity to go out there and help the boys. This is not about Endrick. This is about Real Madrid getting three points. This is about Real Madrid beating Atletico Madrid and getting very close to Barcelona, who's been on fire this season. Barcelona slips up once this season. You have an opportunity to to really get them from messing up, and you do this, Hendrik. You can't do that. That's not acceptable. And I go back and I think to myself, like, man— would would Lamine Yamal ever do that? And the answer is no, because that's what makes Lamine Yamal. Today shows you what makes Lamine Yamal so great. And for all the haters out there that still don't believe in Lamine Yamal, listen to me very carefully. This is what makes Lamine Yamal great. Like, the, he doesn't do dumb things like that. He He's smart. He didn't do it for Spain in, in, in the Euro. He doesn't do it for Barcelona often. The guy does not do dumb things like that. And that's just very, very, very dumb and immature from Endrick. And it, it makes me think maybe you should not sub him in for a couple games to teach him a lesson. Maybe you should. And I know players make mistakes all the time, but this is a big, big mistake at a big, big time. And a very, and I know you're going to be like at a big, a big time of the season. I know that, oh, it's early in the season. No, but listen, y'all. Barcelona, all right, yeah, they lost the game. But the way they've been looking, they don't look like they're going to lose a lot of points this season, right? So you can't make mistakes like that. But let's digress to the beginning. I never want to say an injury is a good thing because it's not. But Real Madrid looked completely different today without Mbappe. And it's because these boys, Valverde, uh, uh, Jude Bellingham, uh, uh, Rodrigo, Vinicius Jr., they're used to this diamond formation, they're used to this diamond formation that they ran all year last year. They're very used to that. And when Mbappe came in, they're no longer in a diamond. They are in a different formation now. They're doing stuff differently. And you can see it doesn't gel the same. It gels better without Mbappe. Am I saying Mbappe's a problem and they've lost points because of Mbappe? No, the formation is a problem. And I've said this to y'all many times. Someone's got to get dropped, whether it's Rodrigo, whether it's Valverde, whether it's someone needs to get dropped. And I would never drop Rodrigo because he's phenomenal. But at the end of the day, what's happening is when they're all out there, it's too offensive and there is no balance to it. There's Vinny, there's Rodrigo, there's 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 uh, 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 Mbappe. Then you got Jude Bellingham and Valverde. And then you come only one more midfielder. And usually that midfielder is either going to be a Kamavinga or a Chua Mane. And, 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 and you don't really have a balance. And, and it, 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 it doesn't flow. You players are falling out to the right or players are, you know, you got Mbappe and Vinny both leaning to the left. And you got Valverde and Rodrigo both leaning to the right. And, and, and then there's these gaps and these counterattacks that happen. But in the in the in, in the in the in the diamond, those things don't happen because people know where they need to be, how to be, when to be, and where to be, and that's what's really important with this this Madrid. Ancelotti will figure it out, but I think he's going to figure it out honestly around January. You know, last year they figured it out late. I remember that diamond was not looking juicy, and they figured it out late, and they're going to figure it out. But it's going to be later in the season, and that's what I'm telling you, like. Hendrick, you have an opportunity to, 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 to push close to the Barcelona. You have an opportunity to be a hero, bro, on a counterattack. Hold up. Just wait for Jude Bellingham. Even if you want to take the shot, just wait for Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham is going to make the defender make a decision. And if that defender tracks Jude Bellingham, you're going to be free, Hendrick, to run up the field. If he tracks you, you're going to get Jude Bellingham free. And the thing is, Hendrick, if you give it to Jude, you're probably going to get it back to you. Because Jude's probably not going to run that and shoot that. He's probably going to run it up and give it back to you, and you are going to get a tap-in goal because that's the way Jude is. Jude would have found the best play possible. He would either take the shot if it was there, or he was going to feed you. And 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 you got to let the best players in the world make the best play, best decisions in the world. Giving that ball to Jude Bellingham, bro, he would have cooked. You saw Jude Bellingham's reaction 
right? Jude Bellingham just falls to the floor, puts his hand. I think I believe it was Jude on that counterattack. Jude Bellingham falls and puts his hands to his head because he knows, like, bro, the game's over right here. Just let me catch up. We end this game, bro. We go back to the locker room. We we all take a, a sip of water. We go out to dinner tonight. Everybody has a good time at dinner tonight. It's a vibe. We caught up to Barcelona. You know what I'm saying? La Mina Mao's been cooking, and guess what? We're right on top of them. But instead, you try to be O-block from 30 yards out. Again, Andrick is going to be a phenomenal player. He has a lot to learn. He's an amazing player. He's a great player. Let's not ever forget that. He's, he seems great. He always comes in with a lot of energy. He always plays really good for Real Madrid. He looks way better than he looked in preseason. But these little things, lads, is what, what that's the difference between winning and losing a season. It's the difference between being a champion at the end of the year and not being a champion. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the, this is the difference. Imagine, like, you know, hypothetically speaking, you know, you, you, you imagine nobody else loses the rest of the year and it just comes down to Barcelona versus Real Madrid El Clasico games. You get me? Like, imagine, that's not going to happen, but imagine if that's what happened. Nobody else loses the rest of the year. This game would have been that important, bro. A W here would have been huge, huge, um, especially against a big rival. So, again, Endrick will learn. He's young. He got it. It'll be fine. Barca fans, don't freak out neither. One bad game. I think you guys are fine as well. But this is La Liga. And this is what we love to see. We don't want to see one team run away with it. We want to see competitive football. This Atletico Madrid versus Real Madrid game was a sick watch. It was amazing football. And um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I, I mean, watching La Liga is better than watching Manchester United. I shouldn't have said that.